Welcome back to the channel guys, I'm your host Buckning and today we're going to talk about that dreaded withholding tax that everyone keeps telling me about that I'm paying on US dividend stocks or on US dividends and a tax-free savings account. But before we get into that, if you're new to the channel, welcome. This is where we put $100 a week into a tax-free savings account to build a dividend portfolio right in front of your eyes. And if you're not new, welcome back. So for the day here, we're going to talk about the portfolio real quick, but then we're going to talk about U.S. dividends and why I hold them in a tax-free savings account. Maybe why you should consider maybe holding them there instead of an RSP account. And yes, this might start some controversy, but I'm totally open to that. I'm totally okay with that, having discussion and, and really figuring it out. Because not all investors are created equally and not all investors have the same situation and not all investors are Warren Buffett. I'm definitely not Warren Buffett. But anyways, the portfolio today closed out at $8,650.30 up $142.32, up 1.67%. For the one week, we're up $213.14, up 2.53%. For the one month, we're up $705.99, up 8.89%. For the three months, we're up $651.70, up 8.15%. For the one year, we're up $1,644.34, up 23.47%. And for the all, we're up $1,802.79, up 26.33%. The portfolio closed out at $8,650.30, and I'll show you exactly why. Qualcomm had a great day. Qualcomm was up 7.89% today. And we talk about this, you know, every, every position we update is in all these videos, and, and I haven't sold or anything. And this is one of those U.S. stocks that pay a U.S. dividend. So let's talk about it. So as everyone knows, and every educated person or intelligent person in the comment section seems to tell me is, or ask me, why the heck do I hold a U.S. dividend paying stock in a tax-free savings account because there's a 15% withholding tax? I'll tell you why. Because I'm building income for when I don't want to work. And yes, you're like, oh, but he only puts in $100 a week and now. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, you're right. But this is for the channel to show you how easy it is to build a dividend portfolio. And I'm gonna give you an example on, on why it's important to really figure this stuff out. But now, but before we do that, I just want a full disclosure here because I know there's gonna be some nuances, definitely some nuances when I'm talking about this kind of stuff because it's general. And so there are gonna be nuances and this is where the disclosure comes in. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm definitely not your financial advisor. So please go seek out professional advice, licensed advice, which is not me. I'm just a guy on YouTube speaking my opinion. And that also goes for accounting because accountants are very important in this section. Um, I'm not an accountant. I'm not a licensed accountant or anything of the above. If you need tax advice or accounting advice, please go seek a professional that is licensed to do it. I'm just going based off information that I've heard that I know of, and it's not solicited advice. It's just my opinion. Okay. An RSP, if you hold a dividend stock in a tax-free savings account that is from the U.S. and you're a Canadian and you hold in a tax-free savings account, it is automatically taxed 15% on that dividend. It is withheld automatically, instantly. No avoiding it. It's gone. If your dividend stock, like Qualcomm, let's, let's say it paid a 5%, but right now, as you can see on the screen, it pays a 1.48%. Let's just call it 5%. The 15% withholding tax would essentially bring down that dividend yield from 5% down to 4.25%, you would lose 0.75% of a big dividend. Is, am I really stressed out about it? No, it's the last thing on the list of building wealth for me and I don't really care. But a lot of people do. A lot of people get their kind of upset about it, I think. And they're always asking, why do I do that? Why do I do that? And this is where the, the accountant comes into play um, for RSPs because it's a tax strategy. RSPs, what is an RSP? An RSP is a registered retirement savings plan and it's meant for retirement. You can hold US stocks into in an RSP, registered retirement savings plan, and not pay the 15% withholding tax that I would pay in a tax-free savings account, like on the screen here uh, in this account. And you don't have to pay that. Yes, 100% true, correct. And you also get the benefit of um, getting a tax rebate when you contribute a certain amount to your RSP, you can claim that on your taxes and you get a, a, a rebate or a tax credit, I think it is. The terminology might be off, so again, 
this is where you go seek an accountant and, and get the real terminology and really get a full in-depth understanding of that, okay? <clears throat> the reason I do not have an RSP is because it just doesn't make sense in my case and scenario. RSPs are very specific on your scenario and your situation and what you plan on doing in the future. <clears throat> a lot of times, if you have an RSP account, and your income's super low. It just doesn't make sense because you're not really saving enough. And this is where the tax strategy comes into play. And this is where you should seek an accountant to help you understand this. If you do your own taxes, I feel bad for you. I really, really do. Or if you pay one of those franchise places to do your taxes, I feel really, really bad for you because those guys do training in like two weeks and then they think they are tax professionals. Honestly, I feel bad. And and I feel bad that you have to buy those tax things um, at Walmart or wherever it is. And I'm not bashing them. I'm sure they're good if your taxes are very, very simple. But if you're an investor and you have a lot of things coming in and going out and you have ventures and, and businesses and so on and so forth, I suggest you, and I'm sure they do, and I'm sure they know this, I'm sure you have a great accountant and you pay lots of money to make sure that your, your taxes are in order. When does it ever make sense for a RSP? Um, to hold your dividends in RSP. It makes sense for a while you're growing at a young age, say let's you start your RSP at 20, 21 or 22. And you go all the way to 71. And none of those dividends were, were taxed and so on and so forth. And everyone feels bad for Buck, Buck Nane because he paid 15% on his US dividends. Okay. And we both turned 21. And the goal for both of us, myself and RSP guy over here, is to pull out $100,000 a year in dividends, just the dividends, not, not including anything like that. We turned 71. The reason I picked 71 is because RSPs have to convert it into what is called a RRIF, a Registered Retirement Income Fund, where you are forced to withdraw certain amounts, specific amounts determined by the government, and so on and so forth. But you can look into that when you have time. I'm not gonna talk about that in this video because my situation is different and it might not be the same for everybody. Okay. And this is why you need to seek professional advice. I'm just a guy on YouTube making videos, a hundred thousand dollars. I'm going to pull out of my tax-free savings account, a hundred thousand dollars because I can. Okay. Zero taxes at withdrawal. Okay. RSP guy does the same thing, same strategy, same stocks, pulls out a hundred thousand dollars, but now it's in a riff because he turns 71 and it has to be, you have to withdraw a certain amount every single year when you turn 71 or whatever, you retire. <clears throat> Pulls out $100,000, same amount, 100,000 in tax-free, 100,000 RSP, pulled out. Zero taxes on a tax-free savings account. Guess how much you pay taxes on an RSP withdrawal? 30%. Let's just call it 30%. In Canada, we have different provinces. I know there's a diverse amount of provinces that probably watch this and your taxes are different. Provincial, ta provincial taxes are different than the province I'm in. But the federal tax is pretty much the same. That's your marginal tax, I believe. And, and so you're going to get taxed on the whole amount, even your Canadian dividends, even your Canadian stocks and so on and so forth. And eventually you're going to have to sell your stocks because you have to do a specific amount of withdrawal at 71 when your RSP has to be converted into a RIF. The tax-free savings account does not have to be converted, period, end of story. That's it. I don't pay taxes on the 100000 I paid the 50% up front, but now you're paying 30% on the back end of those taxes. Yes, you might have gotten a difference in while you were contributing to your RSP, but this is where the account comes in because it's a tax strategy, tax deferred, not tax bye-bye, gone, never have to see it again, tax deferred. Deferred means or to a later time postponed. They deferred the decision, so they deferred the taxes, okay? That's, that's what it typically means. And so you have to really figure that part out. That is the reason why I do not have, why I do not care that I hold US stocks in a tax-free savings account because I know in the end game when I'm pulling 100K, because that's the goal, make 100K in dividends per year, get a tax-free. Let's say to get tax, tax-free, 0% taxes. In some cases, and... And some people will ask this, well, what about like margin accounts? What about not, um, non-registered accounts? Great question. Go see a financial advisor because there are tax credits on dividends for those as well. In some cases, 
it makes more sense to not even have an RSP ever in your life. Because when you retire, you might be making a boatload. Like when I talk a boatload, I mean, it doesn't even, an RSP doesn't even dent your income to bring you down in tax brackets and so on and so forth. When you research RSPs, it's crazy how much of it has to do with taxes. And this is why you need a good, solid accountant who knows what they're doing, who understands the tax laws and, and can provide their knowledge and provide value in that way. It's not as simple as, oh, I'm just going to put RSPs and so on and so forth. I pay, I pay money and I pay good money for an accountant to help me understand these things because the knowledge is invaluable. And it gives me a strategy from now until I grow old and decrepit and, and ready to retire or retire early and figure out, figure things out that way. I don't want to be bit in the butt. There are some scenarios where in some cases, RSPs really bite people in the butt when they're older because they make so much already. And it would have just been better for them not to even start RSPs. And there are some scenarios like that. And so would I rather pay the 15% up front now? Yes, 100% than paying the 30% on the back end and possibly being forced to liquidate my positions. Yeah, I would rather pay the 15% up front. And yes, am I missing out on certain gains and so on and so forth? But like I said, the 15% is nominal and it's last on, on the list of building wealth. It really is. I just got to say, every investor is different. Everyone's situation is different. Everyone's strategy is different. And, and this is my strategy. This is why I hold it in a tax-free savings account. So next time someone asks me, do the math. Do the math your own. I'm not going to do it on here. But that's it for the video, guys. I hope that makes sense. I'm burying it to the ground. And there's a reason. Now I understand why there aren't many videos on this. Because it's not even... It, it literally has nothing... Well, it does. It's not that big of a deal if you understand what RSPs actually are for. Uh, and this is why a lot of investing channels probably don't talk about it is because it's more of a tax strategy than anything. Right. And, and that's the stuff that's kind of like nuanced, right? It's, it's those little nuances that throw people off and so on and so forth. So do I really care that it's, am I paying a 50% withholding tax? No, I'm not, but I'm open to discussion, you know, put it down in the comment section below. I'm totally open to discussion and I'll do some more research if I have to. And I'll go ask the, the accountant that I have and, and the advisors that I know, and we'll talk about it because a lot of the advisors I talk to, they're like, in most cases, it doesn't make sense for someone who is going to be making more income in the future to have RSPs at all. Um, some of the accountants, it's, it's just a tax strategy. If it makes sense, then they'll do it. If it doesn't, then they don't, right? That's the value of paying a bit extra. You get what you pay for. So if you're going to buy the $60 thing at Walmart or wherever you buy your tax stuff, go for it. But there is actual value in paying an actual accountant to help you understand these things so that you can continue with your strategy and make sure that your strategy is on par with, with what really makes sense. And so other than, that, other than that, guys, hopefully you did enjoy the video. You can leave a like you, if you want. It's completely free, completely optional, but why not? It's free. There's no obligation to not leave a like, right? Subscribe because it's completely free. You know, I'm open to taking suggestions on the next videos and so on and so forth. And it's completely free. Again, it's no obligation helps the channel grow and gets exposure out there. So other than that, guys, have a great week and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.